Hi, it's Chris the Guitar Amp Tech from Sydney, Australia here. Today we're going to be looking at a Fender Bass Breaker 15. If that sounds like something you might be interested in, grab a coffee, pull up a chair, look over my shoulder and we'll get cracking. I know it's been a while since I've done a video, I'm sorry. Uh, I've just been so busy with repair work. I haven't had the luxury of doing videos. You know, it takes time to set up the lights and the camera and the mics and the sound and then the editing. I just got to get these repairs out. But I've decided to try a light approach. And that is, um, I'm just using my uh, GoPro and a Rode mic and a couple of lights and then Hopefully this is good enough quality. My apologies if it's not up to the usual standard. But we're going to have a look at this bass breaker. And the problem is that uh, you turn it on and it makes a loud noise. Okay, bit vague, but let's see if we can make some sense out of what that means. Well, I don't think we have to examine too far to see what that noise was. It's the sound of these EL84s dying. Uh, you can see when they go white, like this one and this one, um, these are dead and you can even, you might even be able to see the crack there. When you see this white tube, be really careful. More often than not, the glass is cracked. Um, air getting in is one reason why this happens. But also that glass is really freaking sharp, mate. It'll just cut your fingers open. All right, let's get these out and explore to see what caused this. We can't just change the tubes and go all is well. Something made this happen. Sure, it could have been a bump, a drop, something, but we can't take the chance. We have to explore it to see why this has happened. Right, let's get these out with that. Cutting our hands open. Let's use a cloth. Oh, that's exactly what I said. Before we apply any power, we're going to make sure that we've got our speaker plugged in, of course. Or if you see an output transformer, you're going to plug in a speaker load. All right, I've made up another little jig like this, which basically adapts this hardwired uh, speaker out to one of these, into which I plug in my workshop speaker. And well, uh, very handy. I've got a whole range of these different little jigs I've made up to suit different um, situations. The voltage is checked out okay. Um, before we look at the schematic, I'm just going to put some power on these tubes. I've got them hooked up to my Eurotubes bias checker, which I was going to look at the plate voltage and the plate current. So let's just turn that power back on. Um, go. Looking good. Should come up about 340. Yep, 340. As current starts to draw, we expect this to go down to about 320. Here we go. Starting to conduct. But, whoa. Plate voltage dropping too fast. Current going stupid high. Okay, we've got other issues here. So these tubes are being slammed full on. That accelerator pedal is to the floor with no gear in place. So this is not good. Now let's have a look at the schematic to see how this is possible. Okay, so um, for those of you who know this sort of stuff, go grab a coffee and be back in about three minutes. For the rest of you, listen in. Now for a tube to be in proper operating range, this grid here needs to be negative compared to the cathode here. And that in a fixed bias amp, that is done by having a negative supply coming to this point here. And it could be anywhere from negative 12 up to negative 48, 50 volts. So that's how it's kept negative compared to the cathode. And that's where the cathode is grounded. But you'll see here, the cathode is not grounded. This cathode goes through this 240 ohm resistor. 
this cathode goes through this 240 amp resistor. They've got independent resistors happening here. So that means that this, with the grid grounded here, that would tend to make us think that we've got zero volts between our grid and our cathode. And when that is the case, that tube is full on blasting its guts out, undoubtedly going to red plate and cook, which is pretty much what we just saw then. But that's what happens in a valve. When this is turned, when there's a huge negative difference, this tube is shut off. When those two are the same, it's flat to the floorboards. When it's biased properly, we will allow a certain amount of current to go through depending on the tube type. So this says, let's allow a little bit of current on. We're going to turn our, you know, we'll get down to idle speed and current is going to flow from our power supply through the output transformer into the plate and then into the cathode and through this resistor here. You know when current flows through resistor, it's going to create a voltage. It's going to create a positive voltage on this leg and this one is grounded. So this then, the cathode, will be positive voltage. The grid will be zero. So that means we've still got a negative bias, a negative supply, no, not negative supply, negative relative voltage between the grid and the cathode. Hence that tube is biased. As I said, if that, if this were to go to zero, that would be full on. So one thing we're looking at is has this resistor or this bypass capacitor and paralleled here shorted to ground? If it has, then the current uh, flowing through here will give us zero volts. Then we can have zero here, zero here. This tube will be full on. So one uh, area of suspicion is this resistor or either of these capacitors. Or notice this has also got a zener here. And this zener is basically to limit this voltage to, in this case, 39 volts. If so much current flows through here, like under normal conditions, that would be 10 volts. If it goes so high due to signal or something going wrong, then these zeners will limit the voltage to 39. So it's also possible that either one of these two zeners or two resistors or two caps have shorted to ground. I'd be putting my money there. Another possibility is that this voltage has gone even higher than this voltage at the cathode. Well, how can that be? Because we know that a capacitor blocks DC, so that should be blocking DC going to that grid. This should be blocking DC going to this grid, because we can see on this side of that capacitor, there is 200 volts on either one of those. On this side of the capacitor, it's zero. However, if these capacitors leak, and I'm sure you've heard that term, then we're going to have way higher voltage, depending on how much it's leaking, than the zero volts that this tube wants to see here. So another possibility is either one or both of these two capacitors are leaking. Less likely, it's not such an old amp, I'm not sure how old it is yet, but um, I wouldn't be suspecting these two, but that is a possibility, and on an older amp, definitely have a look at those caps as being leaking these coupling capacitors. All right, we know where to look. Now let's see how to get into this thing. What the hell, Fender? Oh, God, they're doing a PV on me. I've got to get to that circuit board back there. But this panel is held in place, after unscrewing it, it's held in place by these jacks, which will be troublesome if any of those tiny little wires break. And predominantly by this power connection here to the power socket. Really, Fender? Really? It's this earth wire. Where's the easiest way to get that off? 
pain in the ass either way. Ugh, close, but no cigar. For me to pull this back panel away, these sockets are going to have to come out. Well, unless you got tiny wee little hands, good luck in getting those out and then getting them back in. So what I'm going to do is see if I can find and test these components uh, from here. They look like they're going to be our two power resistors here, our cathode resistors. I venture to say that these will be our Zener diodes. They're our cathode bypass capacitors. All right, now I'm going to get in there and see if I can measure those. I don't know, I'm just going to put my money on the Zeners. What the hell are they thinking? This is what shits me about modern production amplifiers. They have just no consideration or thought that these amps will ever need to be serviced. This is so service unfriendly. Sorry about the microphone noise, I knocked it over again. Now I'll get my bench top voltmeter, digital multimeter, to that Zener, and that's showing a short. I don't know if you can see this, but this is going to take a considerable amount of time. I think I'd better contact the customer and just warn him. All right, I've got some good news. Um, there's not much I can do about the capacitor and the resistor um, without having to remove that back PCB, and that is going to just escalate the cost, which is, is not inconsiderable for the customer. However, I can clip one leg of the two Zeners and just check to see if we've got a um, short circuit there. So I did that, clipped it there, clipped it there, checked it out and sure enough there is a short across both Zeners. So then I powered it up with my uh, test, uh, workshop test EL84s and the current came out fine. So the question is, do we really need these? In almost every uh, cathode bias stamp, you will just find the cathode resistor and the bypass cap. Very rarely do you see a Zener across that cathode resistor. So why is it that it's 39 volts? The normal voltage going through here uh, would be give us 10 volts. So we're talking about three times the current of the idle current before this thing even switches on. That tube's going to be running pretty much flat out. I think it's just a badly chosen value. I think one reason why you could put a Zener here is that uh, as more and more current flows through these and this voltage goes up here, that increases the differential between here, it tends to force the tube to run colder for that instant, which then pushes it closer to uh, a crossover distortion when a tube is biased too cold. So in having a Zener here to come on um, certainly warmer than um, idle, um, is a way of almost converting it from cathode bias, where this voltage will vary up and down, to fixed bias, where this bias, the bias voltage is now set at a predetermined value. Um, without thinking too hard about it, my gut feeling is this thing's out by a factor of two. Uh, I'd be happier to see something like 14, 15, 16 volts as a Zener diode there. So basically it's going to be operating in cathode bias for you know low levels. And when the current draw is really high, it, it almost automatically switches over to fixed bias and will avoid having that crossover distortion, which 
we hear is a bit of a harsher sound or a bit of a fizzy sound. And it's the only thing that, that could be detrimental to a, a cathode bias amp, which I really love. That's what I think it is. I don't think there's going to be any loss in leaving these things unclipped. And so that's what I'm going to do. All right, I've got my new um, tubes in there. They're a matched pair of JJ's. And let's power it up. I've got the um, tube bias checker here. So we'll be able to watch the plate voltage and current. Remember last time it went over 100. And let's hope that that was it. Just those diodes. 340 should settle down around 300. Oh, I can hear the hiss that's coming through now. Three oh one, three oh two. That's looking very good, actually. Let's just check our numbers here. Look at how well balanced they are. The thirty-seven and thirty-six, excellent match. Never had a problem with these people, these suppliers. All right, um, power. 0.037 amps times 301 volts is 11.1 watts. This is perfect. Divide that by 12 watts. 92. Perfect for a cathode bias configuration. The other one's obviously the same. We can hear the hiss. No sign of ramping up. That was the problem. Those unnecessary and uh, from my perspective at least they were the incorrect value just way too high a zener voltage that was a good outcome it could have been much worse if i had to pull out that that backboard but just clipping out those two diodes which in my opinion at least were the wrong values in the wrong place and unnecessary you don't see them in normal cathode bias amps so they're gone, never to see the light of day again, and um, ah, they're in the bin. And it sounds fine, yeah. Great cleans. Thanks for dropping in. Oh, don't forget, like and subscribe. See you soon.